There's an issue. In Framer, you cannot trigger a change in element B with element A only if you have both of them wrapped in the same component. What if I have a button at the top of my website that should trigger a change on the bottom of the website? Should I have my whole page in a component? Of course, that's just silly. So in this video, I'm bringing a solution to this with a new component called Cross Component Interactions. This will allow you to have two completely separate elements, not wrapped in the same component, interact with each other perfectly. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. So in this quick video, I'm going to go through the problem, what we had to do before in order to create interactions, and then I'm going to you know, show you the solution to it and show you how you can utilize it on your framework websites. Uh, you're going to find a link in the description that you can use to get this component for completely free. So feel free to click that link, copy it to your pages and projects and start playing around with it. And now let's see this little example that I have on my screen. This is a pricing page that has a monthly yearly toggle on the top. And you know this should change these cards below. So as you can see, each of these cards have a monthly and a yearly plan. And on each of these, you know, the price is different. So on yearly, it's a little bit less, but you know, here it's billed yearly. So if you take a look at this right now, when I click the monthly and yearly, nothing really happens. So in order to connect this interaction, what I would need to do normally in Framer is to wrap the pricing toggle and these three cards in the same component. So I would just need to click pricing toggle, then cards, then wrap them in a frame by right clicking and adding a stack. And then maybe I'm just gonna increase the spacing here. And then I would have to turn this into a component. So let's just call it pricing. And then I would have to create another variant here called yearly, change the variant of the toggle to yearly, and then change these cards as well to their yearly variant. And then I would need to connect interactions from this toggle. So for example, when monthly is clicked, new transition is added to variant one because that's the monthly. And then from yearly, when we click that, we would go to the variant two. So this is how we would connect these interactions and set up this little interaction on our pricing page. And as you can see, it works perfectly. However, this gives us a little bit of a hard time when it comes to first for responsiveness, because as you can see, our responsiveness that we had is now completely lost because now this whole thing is wrapped in a component. Let me show you what we had before. Uh, let me just undo you a few times. As you can see, this was completely responsive. The cards were right below each other. And once we have a component like this and we want to optimize it, well, that is a little bit harder because we already have two variants. So how do I create a mobile optimized variant? Then this interaction is going to be a little bit broken. So I would need to set up wrapping on this frame, and min, max, widths and stuff like that, or maybe a variable for the direction. But I don't want to mess around with this. And also, what if I have a button, you know, the exact same thing that I mentioned in the uh, intro, what if I have a button on the top of my website that should trigger interaction on the bottom of the site? Or what if I have a bunch of sections between the monthly toggle and these cards? I don't want to wrap everything in the same component. That just makes my life so hard much harder. So here's my solution for this issue. So once you copy the cross copy interaction into your project you, and you go to the assets panel, you're going to find this family university folder and within you're going to find the cross copy interactions component. So you can drag and drop this onto the canvas and you're going to see that this is um, just a like a transparent component. It doesn't have any visual um, and yeah, it has a fixed height. So this uh, component works in two modes. It has a trigger mode and a target mode. In trigger mode, you can define the trigger for your specific interaction. So in this case, the trigger will be when we click monthly and yearly. So to set up the trigger, we have to use this component in a way that we put it within the trigger frame. For target, it's going to be a little different. It's going to have a connecting behavior, but I'm going to also show that. So 
let's copy this command and X. I'm going to go within my pricing toggle. Then within this pricing toggle, I have two other little components, which is basically the same component, just different variants. I'm going to click into this as well. And as you can see here, I have monthly active, yearly active, and then monthly inactive and yearly inactive. So basically, if you think about it, the triggers should be when I click the inactive version, because when I click the active version, well, nothing happens because I'm staying uh, currently on the monthly version. So when I click inactive yearly, I go to yearly. And when I click inactive monthly, I go to monthly. So let's go back inside and paste this component within this monthly active variant first. So comment and we, now you can see that this large component is pasted within. We don't want this in trigger mode. This component will be invisible. It has, it will not have any size. So we'll set the width and height to fit content on the top, right? So fit, fit, well, not viewport, but fit for the height as well. And then in order to not push this monthly text, uh, you know, in a weird way like this, we'll have to set its position to absolute. So now it's really an invisible element within this uh, variant. I can also pin it to the top left with this padding. So it's now right here in the top left corner. But yeah, it's invisible. It's just as this functionality to the side. Now, when we click this curves component interaction on the right panel, we see the mode ID on delay. So first of all, we use it in trigger mode because we want to create a trigger. Then for the ID, we have to set a unique interaction ID. This is really important to be unique because this will be reused when we actually connect this trigger to the target. So here I'm going to call this monthly, monthly, cool. And then the on will be click. So the trigger will happen on click and will not have any delays. I'll also rename the component on the left panel to monthly trigger. Then I'll duplicate it or let's just copy it, comment and see, and then click the yearly inactive variant as well and paste it in here. Now here, this ID will be renamed to yearly. And basically that's the only change I do. I also rename it on the left layers panel yearly trigger. So now really important that the monthly trigger is only visible in the monthly inactive variant, as you can see here on the le left layers panel, the yearly trigger is just like, it's not visible, uh, visibility is set to no. Uh, and on the yearly inactive version, only the yearly trigger is visible. The monthly trigger is deactivated. So it's literally not going to do anything. It's not going to be on the site. So we have the triggers set up. So now we can go back to our page and we can set up this cross component interaction in target mode. So we're going to go to assets again and then drag and drop this component on the canvas one more time. And then I'll just place it uh, here among these cards. Now, this component will be now used in target mode. So I'll switch it to target on the right panel. And you can see that now this is working in a connecting with a connecting behavior. So I have this little like connector and I can connect it to these pricing cards, but you can see that I cannot really connect it here. So the way connectors work is that you can only connect elements that are outside of your breakpoints. So I'll just select these cards and I'll move them here. That's it. Maybe I'll just make sure that they're positioned like this, maybe a little bit nicer. Actually, I don't even care about the width because we're going to fix that on the component level. So now I'll just grab this little connector and connect it to the first pricing card. You can see that it looks really weird because as I'm resizing now this cross component interaction component, the connected pricing card is just staying on this width that we set right here. If we resize it here, it's also resizing on the page but I kind of want it to follow the size of the cross community interaction frame. So I'll just use the width fill and height fill options here. So now I can set the height of the cross component interaction frame to 340 and the width to fill. So now uh, I have this right here and you can see that the last property is interactions. It's an array where we can add multiple interactions. The first is already added. The ID is interaction one, but as you remember, we renamed it to monthly. So we have a monthly trigger. And if you think about it with this, you want to change once 
to a specific variant. And as you can see, we have to write the exact name of the variant we wanna to switch to. So this pricing card component, as you remember it, has a monthly and a yearly variant. And you can see that the variant names start with uppercase, we'll have to write it exactly. When the monthly ID uh, trigger is fired, we wanna modify the target element to variant monthly. I'll add another interaction here, which will be yearly. And then the variant we wanna switch to is going to be called yearly. And that's basically it. So now if I click here, yearly, it changes perfectly back to monthly. It works perfectly. So now that I added these two interactions, I can just duplicate this cross component interaction a few times. So I'm gonna press Command D and again, and now I just connect these cards. So here the second card will be connected and here the third card will be connected. I don't have to do anything else because we duplicate it. So the interaction stays the same, the ID and the variant that we're switching uh, tube is basically the same. So now, as you can see, all of these cards nicely change as I'm clicking to monthly and yearly. And now if we take a look at the phone breakpoint, because as you remember, with our previous uh, solution, that was a little bit messy. Now with this, it's, it's perfect because we are not complicating this layout with an additional wrapping component frame. So yeah, the interaction works here, even uh, if we go to mobile, works perfectly. But yeah, it's just um, also responsive. So again, just to emphasize it, here's a little like website. Let's just say that this is a web page. We have an element on the top, element A, and a component on the bottom, uh, maybe like a footer, maybe a CT or whatever um, it may be. And when we click this or this appears or mouse enter, you know, we can set a bunch of uh, different uh, triggers in the trigger mode. We wanna, you know, change the element on the bottom. Now, normally we would need to wrap this whole thing in a component. So our page would look something like this. The whole page is wrapped in a component. It's, it's not a good thing to do, believe me. And then, you know, it would work perfectly. However, you can see that right here, this has the cross component interaction, this little element A, it's set up in a way that the ID is interaction one, it happens on click, but as you can see, we, we can switch it to anything else. And uh, then this uh, component on the bottom is used in target mode and the interaction is connected here. When interaction one is you know, uh, triggered, then on the target component, we're cycling through the components and essentially it just has two components. So we're just switching back and forth between those two variants. So I just click here and it works and they are not in the same component. It's just so crazy. So many new things we can do with this. It's just uh, amazing. I'm really excited about this. So yeah, basically that's it for this little component, cross component interactions. I hope that this will help you um, in creating better framework websites. Again, I, I think that this uh, now unlocks many more possibilities inside the framework. So again, go down to the description, copy the component to your project. Uh, and yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about it or if you want to see a new feature added to it or if you found a bug. Um, and yeah, I'll do my best to answer you guys. Also check out Framework at University for other cool components just like this or tutorials, remixes, scroll animations, whatever. Like if you are a Framer user and you're building websites or you're just learning it, it is going to be a very valuable resource for you. So yeah, that's it for this video. Make sure to like it, subscribe for more, and I'm gonna see you in the next one.